Warning, this video will contain spoilers up to chapter 1039. You've been warned. Also, this video is brought to you by Boxu, but we'll talk about that later. Hello, my Nakamotachi, this is Jewelry Girl. Now, a little while ago, I made a video discussing some of the remaining mysteries at Wano. And something that I mentioned in that video is a little tease in the manga in chapter 990, when Hawkins makes a prediction that a certain man only has a 1% chance of surviving until the next day. And I wanna thank everyone for watching that video because one of the most popular comments that I received was of people telling me that the anime actually confirmed the identity of that 1% man by Hawkins explicitly outright saying that Drake is that 1% man. Now obviously that's very different to what we got in the manga because the possibility of Drake being that man was only heavily suggested through the circumstances. It was the fact that Hawkins made that prediction during his conversation with Drake and Drake himself during that conversation was actually trying to lure Hawkins into betraying the Beast Pirates. And then later on in the chapter we found out out that Drake was the one being set up by Who's Who Queen and Hawkins himself, setting him up to confront him about being a traitor. And so with all of this combined, you could have made a sound speculation that Hawkins was talking about Drake all this time. You know, given that this is Hawkins who relies on his cards to make his decisions, maybe he was weighing up the options, you know, do I side with Drake and warn him and maybe even heed his words when he says that now is the time to betray the Beast Pirates or do I stick with the original plan with Who's Who and queen instead. And then, oh, Drake is practically a dead man walking, so I better stick with the original plan, which is why Hawkins let Drake go with who's who instead. But in saying all that, that still would have been just speculation. That chapter, that panel was open to interpretation, which is why at the time there were loads of other speculations floating around about who the identity of that 1% chance man would be, with a lot of people guessing that it might be Luffy for obvious reasons. And even though you could say that people were just simply reading too much into it, and it should have been clear even from the manga itself that it was Drake all along, I think it's fair that a lot of us do tend to read too much into the details because Oda does often use a lot of vagueness to misdirect us and then set us up for a major twist later on. And an example of this could be the conversation between Nekomamushi and Marco. So in chapter 909, right at the beginning of the Wano arc, we see Nekomamushi trying to recruit Marco to join the cause of the Alliance. But then during their conversation, Marco tells Neko about Whitebeard's hometown, the fact that he's now taking care of it, as well as his concerns about Weevil. So then in response, Neko says, I can see why you wouldn't want to leave then, and instead Marco leaves Neko with a note. Marco asks Neko to pass on a message to Luffy instead. But because of that conversation, all of the surrounding circumstances, the context, we all essentially believe that Marco would not be coming to Wano. We believe that those pieces of dialogue was essentially establishing that Marco would wouldn't be able to come to Wano. But then of course in chapter 982, we found out that Marco had intended to come to Wano all along and that message, that note he wanted to pass on to Luffy was simply just to tell him that he was going to be late. Because the key thing about the conversation between Neko and Marco in chapter 909 was that Marco never explicitly said that he wouldn't be coming to Wano. Marco never explicitly answered and agreed with Nekomamushi saying that, yes, I can't leave because I'm protecting Whitebeard home village. So then when you have sort of similar situations like the Drake and Hawkins moment where the dialogue doesn't necessarily explicitly confirm anything, I don't think you can blame us for going crazy, pouring into the dialogue, pouring into the details and coming up with all sorts of speculations. Except of course in this case, again, the anime has actually confirmed this in episode 1001. Now I think for some people this might not be anything big because the anime does this or does similar things all the time. Because of the fact that they're roughly one year behind the manga. The producers have loads of material that they know is happening in the manga, so things essentially happening in the future for the anime, and they're able to sprinkle this in into their episodes. Now this obviously sometimes results in reveals that happen so much earlier in the anime episodes than they did in the manga. The obvious example for this arc would be Zoro having Conqueror's Haki, which was revealed so much earlier in the anime than we got it confirmed in the manga, which is something that raised a lot lot of discontent amongst the fan base, or even the anime openings. Anime openings in general, but also including One Piece, is some of the most spoilery materials that I've ever come across because they usually contain heaps of stuff that only manga readers would be aware of. But I really want to emphasize that the point of this video isn't to complain about the anime or to complain about Toei, but I do want to spill the tea and share some of my thoughts on the anime and how it 
intersects with the manga. But then speaking of tea, this video is brought to you by Boxu. So Boxu is a premium Japanese snack subscription service that delivers an assortment of Japanese snacks. And you guessed it, they come with tea pairings. Each month there's a different theme, which means that you get to try out different snacks each time and experience more of the Japanese local culture. And given that it's February, I've been given the pink Valentine theme box. And whilst Valentine's Day will have passed by the time this video is released, you can enjoy these snacks any day of the year because one snack a day, keeps the sadness away. Something that I think is really cool about Boxu is that they partner with local artisans and businesses. So it means that you get to try the local culture, the local food in Japan, and you also get to read up and find out more about the local culture. And then on top of that, their snacks are actually really delicious. So I've already had dinner, so I'm gonna go with dessert and I'm gonna try this Ume sake candy. For example, this delicious candy has been created by a business that's been crafting these candies for over a century, over a hundred years. That's how they've perfected it. That's why it tastes so good. Oh, okay, see? Here's the tea that I told you about. Hojicha is actually one of my favorite teas. It's a type of green tea that gets roasted, which makes it have such a earthy, such a toasty, warm flavor. And oh my goodness, I can't wait to have this. It's so exciting. For those of you in the US, which I know most of you are, Boxu offers free shipping. So if you're a snack lover like me, I'd highly recommend signing up to Boxu. And when you do, make sure to use my code and my link for your very own authentic Japanese subscription box so that you can taste your way through Japan. All right, thanks Boxu. I'm gonna drink that tea later. But for now, I'm going back to spilling the tea. So the question that I have is how accurate is the anime and how much can we take to believe that they know of things that we don't or that hasn't been confirmed in the manga? That Drake and Hawkins moment, for example, do they know for sure that Drake was the person that Hawkins was referring to? Because making an explicitly new piece of dialogue like they did in the anime with Hawkins going as far as to say something like, I was kind enough to tell you your fortune that you only have 1% chance to survive, whereas this is is something that never happened in the manga to this day we've never even had a callback to that moment to that prediction in the manga I think that sort of difference is a pretty big deal and I do think that something like that is really different to say when they just reveal something earlier in the anime than we got in the manga because at least in the case of an early reveal we do know that that is canon material it's just that they're being released or revealed earlier whereas in the case of the Drake and Hawkins moment these are mysteries that are being revealed and because there is no manga material to back it up, we're now left in a tricky spot where we're left wondering whether this is canon or not. And we also saw something quite similar happen in episode 984, where the shadowy figure following Jinbei and Robin that we saw in chapter 979 was revealed in the anime to be Yamato. And again, the manga has never gone back to confirm that to be Yamato or not. In fact, it's never gone back to that moment. There's never been a callback to that moment at all. And now I have discussed this topic of how much to take the anime material as canon before in another video because I said it back then and I will say it again now I do think that there are definitely some stuff some material that the anime producers are privy to that we aren't some of you may remember that we had the artist Henry Thurlow be so kind to join us on a Let's Talk Wano episode and Henry is an animator at Toei working on One Piece and now he didn't go into the details of how Toei operates but from the conversation the understanding that I was left with is that they're not privy to all of the big mysteries. For example, he obviously doesn't know what the ending of One Piece is, but I think that doesn't necessarily mean that they're kept in the dark about everything. I think it's pretty common knowledge that there is some communication between Oda and the anime staff, even if it's limited. Oda seems to endorse the anime quite a lot, especially in the Wano arc. In fact, during one of his weekly Shonen Jump messages, he actually told us to go watch the anime because they've been ramping it up since the Wano arc. And I do think that there has been a sort of symbiotic relationship between the anime and the manga where Oda could be left to really carry on with his story and really focus on developing the story. And then the anime has been making up for this by extending the fights that were mostly off screened. But then of course, extending a fight is really different to making reveals that weren't present in the manga. Which is why I'm still left with this question and a little hesitant to take all of those details from the anime as canon material. 
material. Because if I go back to that example of the figure following Robin and Jinbei, when I watched the episode 984, that was a pretty big blow for me. And the reason why that is, is because if you've been following this channel for a while, you'll know that I'm a big believer that Toki is alive. How this discussion, how this video turned into a Toki video is beyond me. The agenda is real, guys. <laughs> but bear with me because it does actually relate to how the anime is potentially revealing things or showing details that would actually be incorrect going by the manga. Now, for those of you who are pretty new here, I know that the evidence is pretty damning against Toki being alive, especially since we saw Hiyori show up at Onigashima and especially how the anime portrayed Toki Toki's death, but I've still remained pretty adamant that Toki is alive. Which is why episode 984 was a pretty big blow for me. Because for those of you who haven't watched my original Toki Theory video, you can go back to watch it. But I will have to warn you that that was made in the very early days of my YouTube career. And so the quality of that video is just, just really isn't that great. <laughs> so for the purpose of this discussion, I'll just explain that one of the details that I was looking at, one of the potential hints that I had picked up was actually that panel from chapter 9. 979, and I thought that that shadowy figure tailing Robin and Jinbei was actually Toki. And this related to a whole series of other panels, which I thought that they all could point to Toki being alive and being present at Onigashima. So then in the episode, when the anime showed that as being Yamato, well, I was just pretty surprised because that is obviously not something that we've seen in the manga. And obviously that then somewhat pokes a hole into my theory. But then another interesting development that we got in the anime, it revealed the mystery of the person who said the dialogue in chapter 982 when we saw in that chapter someone off screen or off panel saying to Marco aboard the ship, I'm pretty surprised that you got involved Marco. And now I believe that that was also Toki, but the anime actually confirmed or revealed that to be Izo. And this is where things get spicy. Because in the manga, you only see a snippet of that person speaking. You just see the bottom part of their clothing, which in the manga is shown as striped. Or at least it seems striped. Which is why reading the manga, I thought that that can't be Izo because that's not the clothing, that's not the pattern that's on Izo's kimono. Izo has some sort of dragon tail or some sort of flame-like pattern printed at the bottom of his kimono. And so I don't know, I guess you could make an argument that from some angles, maybe it looks like stripes. Or maybe even that chapter itself, that panel was actually just supposed to show shadows on a kimono and it actually wasn't striped patterns at all. But I guess with the anime disregarding that detail and outright showing us Izo, it's just something that has always been at the back of my mind. It's a detail that has stuck with me and it's something that has got me thinking about all of the other possible reveals or confirmations that weren't actually revealed in the manga yet. And I guess it's just something that I want to open up as a question to you guys. How much stock do you hold in the anime to be showing as canon material? Or what do you guys believe are just elements of their own interpretation? You know, how much do you think the anime knows and how much should we take as confirmed canon material? And do you guys have similar experiences when you guys have seen inconsistencies between the manga and the anime? And I mean this especially for the Wano arc. I know there are heaps of examples of inconsistencies, especially earlier in the series but I do mean specifically for the Wano arc because I really do think that Toei has stepped up the anime for the Wano arc. And that's precisely why it has me wondering whether these are canon material or not. But anyways, that's just where my head's been at. Let me know your thoughts by leaving a comment below. Don't forget to like and share the video. Please also subscribe if you'd like to hear more One Piece discussions and you can also join our Joy Fleet Discord server or even become a patron member. And I want to thank all my patrons for help supporting the channel. This is Joy Girl and I'll see you again soon.